Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Top Gate. In this video, I will discuss one more uh, variant of the shortest job first algorithm that is the preemptive variant. In the previous video, we have already seen the non preemptive version of the shortest job first algorithm, and in this one, we will see the preemptive one. Now, if we talk about the preemptive one, so this preemptive one will also be called as the shortest remaining time first. So, if uh, anywhere you see uh, its shortest job first written, then shortest job, fun, job first usually means that it is a non preemptive one but if we talk about the preemptive version of the shortest job first algorithm then its name its correct name should be shortest remaining time first clear so this is the preemptive version of the shortest job first algorithm that is called as the shortest remaining time first algorithm clear so, so we will uh, follow the same approach as we did in the previous uh, video that is the shortest job first algorithm that is the non preemptive one uh, but there will be slight difference in this one that is we will be considering the process having the uh, preemptive approach so we will follow the preemptive approach that is uh, we will start with any process and any time if any process comes which is having the shorter burst time than the ongoing process then the ongoing process has to leave the CPU and go to the waiting state. Clear? So this is the example we have. We have five processes P1 to P5 and we have the arrival times given as this and we have the burst times given as and then we have to calculate the turnaround time and the waiting time. Fine. Uh, one more thing I need to tell you. Uh, its name is shortest remaining time first. Why we are calling it as shortest remaining time first? The, the reason behind this is uh, suppose one process is executing. Its uh, burst time is suppose 9. Fine. So it is executing and it executed from 0 to 5. Clear? And 0 to 5 it executed for 5 units and now at 5 its 4 units are still left. Clear? Now suppose at time 5 another process comes which is having the burst time of say 6. Clear? So its remaining burst time at 5 is 5 and the next process which is coming is having the burst time of 6. However, if you compare 6 and 9, then you can see that 6 is shorter. So 6 should be having the high priority. But I will not see 6 with 9. I will only compare 6 with uh, the remaining part of the process which is going on. So that is why we call this algorithm as the remaining time first. So if the remaining time is shorter, it will continue. If the remaining time is more than the next process, then it has to leave the CPU and go to the waiting state. Clear? So we have this example P1 to P5 and these are the uh, arrival times. So let's start with the GAN chart first. So I'll start the GAN chart. So right now we are at time 0 and I will see at time 0 is there any process which is coming. So I can see that P1 is coming at 0. However, its burst time is 9. If you see this one closely, then out of these five process, P4 is having the shortest burst time. So P4 is having the highest priority right now. But P4 will be arrived in the future. It is not, it has not arrived yet. It will arrive at time 5. So at 0, there is no process. There is no competition in the RAM. There is only P1 which is there in the RAM. So we don't have any option. We simply have to schedule P1 onto the processor. So P1 will start and uh, let's write it more bigger that will be more clear to you so I'll write P1 so P1 will start at 0 and its burst time is 9 so this P1 will try for 9 units it will try for 9 units let's see whether it can run or not so it will start at 0 and then it will reach at 1 as soon as it reaches 1, it, it will see, is there any process which is arriving at time 1? No, there is no process. So again, it will continue. It will go till 2. Okay. So it will go till 2 and at 2, another process comes P2. Clear? And the P2's burst time is 5. So till 2, I will see how much P1 has executed. So 0 to 2, P1 has executed 2 units. That is, if we do 9 minus 2, we will be getting... 7. So now we'll compare the remaining time of P1 with the burst time of P2. So 7 and 5, which one is shorter? So of course P2 is having the shorter burst time. Therefore at 2, P1 has to leave the CPU and go to the waiting state and P2 uh, will continue from here on. Clear? So P2 will start over and it will can uh, try for 5 units and for this one 7 is still left. So I have written 7 here. 
fine so p2 will start at 2 it will try for 5 units so let's start so 2 will uh, this p2 will start and it will reach 3 fine after reaching 3 it will see that p3 has also arrived so p3's burst time is 6 and p2 since it has executed 1 so 4 is left so 4 and 6 which one is shorter so of course p2 is shorter therefore p3 will not be able to preempt p2 p3 has to wait so p2 will continue and uh, will go till because at 4 there is no process coming so it will go till 5 clear so when it goes till 5 at 5 p4 also arrives fine so now uh, in the ram there are one two three four we have four process clear and the competition is between p1 p2 p3 and p4 so let's see wh uh, who wins this competition so p2 started at 2 and we are at time 5 right now so it has executed three units so out of five it has executed three units and two are still left so it is having two it is having seven it is having six it is having four so out of these four process who is shorter of course p2 is since its remaining time is two only therefore p2 will continue no one will be able to preempt this p2 so p2 will continue and it will take all its how many units five units and it will complete its work at two plus five is seven so this process will be exited it will be terminated it will go out of the ram now this process does not exist now we are at time 7 and i can see that at 7 all the process has arrived fine so in the ram we have p1 also we have p3 also p4 also p5 also now the competition is between these three uh, these four process and i'll see which one is shorter so out of these four this p4 is having four so p4 is shorter right now so p4 will take over the cpu from here and it will complete its four units and no one will be able to preempt it so this p4 will start and p4 will take for four units and it will continue till 11 it will also complete its work and terminate and go out of the ram so now there are three processes in the ram that is p1 p3 and p5 out of these three p3 is the one which is having the shortest burst time so p3 will take over from here on and since it is the shortest one right now so no one will be able to preempt it therefore it will start at 11 it will take whole six units it will go till 17 it will also complete its work and terminate and go out of the ram so now there are only two process p1 and p5 out of p1 p5 p1 is having the shorter burst time that is seven because it has already executed two units so p1 will take over from here that is p1 and it will complete its work at 17 plus 7 is 24 so this will also complete and go out of the ram clear the last process that we have is p5 p5 will take over at 24 its time is 8 so 24 plus 8 is 32 so this is the gan chart for this particular example clear now quickly calculate the the this uh, completion time and then the turnaround time and the waiting time so what is the completion time completion time is the time at which the process is completing its work and going out of the system so for p1 p1 uh, it is completing its work at 24 so i will write straight away 24 p2 is completing its work at 7 p3 is completing its work at 17 p4 at 11 and p5 at 32 so we have got the completion times now the next one is the turnaround time and the turnaround time that we know is the completion time minus arrival time fine so quickly i'll write completion times 24 7 17 11 32 i'll put minus sign quickly and then the arrival times. So arrival times are 0, 2, 3, 5, 6. So 0, 2, 3, 5, 6. Quickly calculate. So it is 24. 7 minus 2 is 5. 17 minus 3 is equal to 14. 11 minus 5 is equal to 6. 32 minus 6 is equal to 26. 
So that is the turnaround time we have calculated. And then the waiting time, waiting time is turnaround time minus the burst time. So we quickly light this uh, TAT 24, 5, 14, 6, 26, and then put the minus sign and the burst times 9, 5, 6, 4, 8. So 9, 5, 6, 4, 8. 24 minus 9, it is 15, 5 minus 5, 0, 14 minus 6, 8, 6 minus 4, 2, 26 minus 8, it is 18. Clear? Now quickly calculate the average waiting time and the average turnaround time. So average waiting time is equal to, we have these waiting times as 15 plus 0 plus 8 plus 2 plus 18 and divided by we have 5 process so divided by 5 so 15 plus 8 it is 23 23 plus 2 is 25 25 plus 18 it is 43 divided by 5 so 43 divided 5 divided by 5 is 8 point and uh, 40 and 36 now average turnaround time it is 24 we have we have found out everything 24 plus then 5 14 6 26 14 6 26 divided by 5 we have 5 process fine so 24 plus 5 is 29 29 plus 14 is 43 43 plus 6 is 49 and 59 69 and 75 so 75 divided by 5 that is we have 1 and 15 so 15 is your average turnaround time and 8.6 is your average waiting time fine so that is all in this one in the next video i'll discuss few more examples of uh, the shortest remaining time first because uh, in most of the questions they'll always ask you about the preemptive variant of sgf that is they'll ask you about the shortest remaining time first because uh, as compared to the non preemptive variant this one is a little bit tricky fine so mostly in 80 percent questions they will always ask you about the shortest remaining time first algorithm so in the next video we will discuss few more examples of the shortest remaining time first algorithm and then we'll move on to the next algorithm thank you so much